Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil in our soul and from our sinful deeds. Those who are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can misguide them. Those who are not guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no guide for them. I bear witness that there is no deity except Allah, there is no God except Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam is his servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhal adhina amanu taqullahi wa katu katihi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, revere Allah with the reverence only due to Allah, and die not except as Muslims in submission to Him. Ya ayyuhal nas utaku rabbakum aladhi kalakakum min nafsan wahidatin wa kalaka minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nasa'an wa taku la aladhi tasa'alun bihi wa arham inna laha kana alaykum raqibun. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person and from him created his mate. And from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut off the relationships of the womb, of kinship. Surely Allah is ever all watchful over you. O ye who believe, keep your duty to Allah and fear him and speak always the truth. He will direct you to do righteous good deeds and will forgive you for your sins. So, alhamdulillah, um, I want to welcome you to the Islamic Society Leading American Muslims, an organization that was established to conduct da'wah. Uh, not only to conduct da'wah, but to empower and educate people that were born Muslim and people that revert to Islam. So, we are struggling to... Um, accept and find people that want to reattach themselves to this religion. Many people who were born in Islam, we have learned, were not taught how to pray, were perhaps not taught the religion very well. We are here to empower you, to hold your hand, to nurture you, so that you can come back in a safe environment. And I say that if anyone ever criticizes you here, anyone condemns you, anyone castigates you, anyone indicts you, I'd like to know about it because I will discuss it with them personally. We want a safe place for you to come, and if anybody does that, I will beat them up in the parking lot. And I'm not a violent man. And my mommy will get her cane after you. So, um, obviously I'm kidding, but my spirit of what I'm saying could not be more sincere. We, we want you to be safe and we want you to be able to come back to this faith. We just had, I deem by Allah, an exalted month of Ramadan. Many of the students reported feeling that it was the best Ramadan they had ever had. For some of our students, it was their first Ramadan where they actually fasted. Some of our students are praying for the first time. Some of our students are praying five times a day for the first time in their life. These are victorious and triumphant things, my beloved seekers of truth, my beloved brothers and sisters. And so it's something to rejoice about because Ramadan came as a prescription from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we would purify ourselves, that we would get ourselves, draw ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I deem by Allah that many people, alhamdulillah, have done that in the month of Ramadan and we only want to grow from that. We want to build upon that, inshallah. So, just to cover um, some announcements, I'd like all of you to come next week 
Arthur Richards will be handling the class for me. He'll be picking up where I leave off, inshallah. Please support him. He's also a young reaver um, who I love very dearly. He and I meet on a weekly basis to work on Arabic together, mostly for me to learn from him. Um, and so please support him. A lot of times when I'm not here, people don't come. I really would like to beseech you by Allah to come, support him as a young man, uh, and be in the class as a family where we connect and we build on that. Uh, where do you want to go in? I'm going to North Carolina. Um, I haven't had a vacation since we went to England in June of last year. And so I'm going to take a break and go into the mountains of North Carolina for a week, inshallah. And so I will miss you next week, but I will be with you in spirit. I won't be here physically, but I will be with you in spirit. And so I really would like that you all come together um, in that spirit next week in my absence. Can you take us all with me? Yes. I wish I could take you all with me. That would be amazing. And we could just do a Skype session for those people here. Um, I want to recognize the people that are here for the first time today. Uh, and I want to make sure that you know, before I even introduce you, that you have an invitation into our family. And the initiation is simply for you to just keep coming back. That's the initiation. Um, to Brother Sharif, if you'll stand up. Brother Sharif just got married in January. How about a lot? Lovely bride. And um, Sharif, I, I have my respect for Sharif is way up there because he works in the roofing business in the heat of Florida. Oh, and, and only a real man can do that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, mashallah, we're so happy to have you. We pray that every Sunday you'll come and be with us. Every fourth. Yes. Sunday, Saturday. Saturday. Saturday night, I get it mixed up, of the month, we have a potluck where we bring food and we fellowship and we have a halakha, and hopefully, inshallah, you will join us for that. Um, also, Usman is with us from Manchester, England. Uh, please stand up, brother. Usman is a hafiz of Holy Quran. His brother is one of the top four hafiz in England, in the UK, has won numerous... Uh, awards for his recitation of Quran. Uh, I had the blessing of uh, fellowshipping with this man. And uh, would you like to say anything, brother? Something different for me today, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's nice to see so many faces and different cultures. And I, I, like, the, I like the fact that everybody um, can come together um, for, for the sake of the deen. And uh, we learn from one another. And uh, inshallah, hopefully this should be our goal. Uh, to focus and work together as a family, like uh, Imam Saik said, we don't want family. And that's the way we should see it. She's a good one. You're welcome. Where do you live? Manchester. 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 Now, let's see. We're also very, very happy that uh, Mark's wife is back with us. Alhamdulillah. It's been a while since we've seen you. Alhamdulillah. And, um, You've been to the class before, haven't you? No, here is the first time. First time, mashallah, welcome, alhamdulillah. I, I thought you'd been to the class before. Um, so this is Mark's wife, please stand up. Uh, and you are actually originally from Morocco, right? Yes. And her name, her name? Hakima. Hakima. Hakima, yes. And of course, um, Sister Maria, is with us today. Um, when did you leave us, Maria? I'm trying to, I'm, I'm brain this. Well, I moved back to Virginia in March last year. In March of last year, she moved to Virginia. Um, a member of our family, even though she lives in Virginia now, she's still a vital member of our family. So, um, please, well, if it's okay, if you will stand up, please. We're so happy to have you with us again today. It's okay, I respect that. Um, anybody that I'm leaving out, anybody here for the first time? Uh, and Lalani, of course, is back with us. I got a Lalani, would you please stand? Lalani was uh, a member of our family that we lost through marriage. And of course, she comes back with a new member of our family, Miriam, um, her daughter, mashallah. Um, so, so happy to have 
Lilani and Miriam with us today. And then Yasin, I don't know what happened to Yasin, but Yasin's grandmother is here. Yes, okay. I see you on the back. Now you change it up on us now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So would you introduce yourself, sister? This is Siti. Yes, Siti, which means grandmother in Arabic. I'm Jiddu to Elijah. <laughs> yes. And so Siti is uh, grandmother, Jiddu is grandfather. And so um, from Philistine. And we are very, very happy to have you with us, Marshall. We we love Yaza and of course we love Amanda. Um, Yes, so we're very happy to have you with us today. And Ashley. we have Ashley with us today. And would you introduce yourself? I'm um, John, Ashley's father. Mashallah, John, Ashley's father. You look like a brother. What's <laughs> 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 I need to talk to you after class. Mashallah. <laughs> 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 You're visiting from Jersey? You visiting from Jersey, yes. Nice. nice to have you. Well, we are very happy to have you with us today. And also, we have okay. another young man. No, no, she's from Maine. Okay, you're from Maine, and let me guess, are you a cousin? Yes. Okay, that's a yes, right? Marshall. Well, we're very happy to have you today. Did I leave anybody out? Alhamdulillah. Well, welcome, um, everybody. If you are available and you did not get the invitation by fluke or nook or whatever, uh, we will be leaving here today 15 minutes early, inshallah, uh, heading over to Dr. Shahada's house for a luncheon that we have every, every year. She invites my students to go for a luncheon. And the luncheon is supposed to be for my students, inshallah. So you should recognize people that are here that come to learn about Islam, inshallah. She, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, Hamida cannot come. She says tomorrow they have some thing in their house. Okay. So, Mandra is here. Mandra. Uh, if you do not get invites to things that I'm talking about, please call me soon and make sure that you get on the group invites. Also, all of my classes are uploaded to uh, YouTube, so you can review them. You can see them again. If you are not here with us, you can also watch the classes. They are usually updated within what two weeks, Mason? Oh no, no, no! I usually have them. Um, um, I usually have them published by Monday night. Usually, uh, I teach on Sunday. Usually, they're up by Monday. Now, next week, uh, the teacher uh, is not sure whether he wants to be on YouTube or not. So that class may not be on YouTube. So if you miss next week, then you're going to miss out until the following week, inshallah, when I get back. A lot with us. Um, Yazid is taking his bar exam on Tuesday, and that is the bar to be an attorney in uh, the state of Florida. Please pray for him. It's an, a very difficult task. It requires so much studying, and he has been under a lot of stress and a lot of uh, strain. So I ask every single member of the family to pray for him, that Allah will bring everything he studied back to his memory when he sets for that exam on next Tuesday. So, uh, we're behind you all the way. Uh, yes, we're, we're praying for you, okay? Uh, also, um, I was Ina's auntie. She just Ina's, found out. Ina's auntie, we just found out. Shahina has pancreatic cancer. Please make dua for her as well, inshallah. So, I think I've covered all the announcements, inshallah. And uh, today, we will pick back up with the tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah. And today we will begin uh, looking at verse 146 of Surah Al-Baqarah, inshallah. And so I will preface it by the slide that you see here. Allah states that the scholars, uh, the people of the scripture, know the truth of what Allah's messenger was sent with. Just as one of them knows his own child. This was a, a hadith. Which is a. Hold on a minute. We are not on the right. Here we go. Now, let, let me preface before I go back here since we were off a slide. What Does anybody remember what we covered last in the, in the um, serum? 
I got the zero, sorry, but the uh, test year. Well, that's what we were covering, but that was sort of a deviation. In the, we were talking about the stubbornness of the Jews at that time not to accept Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we know that although it's mentioned in their scriptures, the Jews did not accept Christ, nor did they accept Muhammad. And we know that as we're going to be looking at today in recent years more and more, and I'm going to be giving you some proofs about this, have Christians began to accept Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'll be, as I said, giving you some proofs about that. So there was a hadith that I want you to be aware of because I'm going to be ending this class today, inshallah, with a verse from the Bible uh, that refers to the burden of Arabia. And I'm, I'm trying to make this full circle. And even before I go into the day, just with what I've said, what do you think the burden of Arabia is? The what of Arabia? The burden. Burden of yes. Arabia. Yes. Anybody just want to guess? The word of Islam? The world. Who said that? Me. Say that again, Kathy? The word of Islam. The word of Islam. She's exactly right. Wow. The burden of Arabia is to bring the Jews and the Christians back and show them in their scriptures where Muhammad and Jesus and these prophets are mentioned. And so if the burden is on Arabia and we become Muslims, the burden is also on us. So I just want to plant that little seed in your garden this morning. One of the verses that is often used, very one-sided, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in various tribes and nations that we might get to know each other, know each other to identify with each other. Getting to know each other doesn't mean that you just know me, but I don't know you. That's not knowing each other. Right? Right. Would you feel like you knew me if I sat down with you and learned everything about you learned everything about me, but I knew nothing about you? So a lot of times in the Islamic world what we see is people like me, ah, salam alaikum Brandon. Who goes to churches, because as many of you know, I'm usually in a church on an average of at least, probably, at least, how often there am, would you say? Once a week. Dispelling misnomers about Islam. How many times does the church come to us to teach us about what they believe? Oh my God, once a year when we have... Uh, so, so this verse is very misunderstood. We need to identify with our neighbors. How can we ever build a relationship with them if we do not identify with each other, like the Quran says? So I just want you to think in that, that frame. Similarly in a hadith, the lost messenger said to a man who had a youngster with him, is this your son? He said, yes, O Messenger of Allah, I testify to this fact. Allah's Messenger said, well, would you not transgress to him, transgress against him, nor would you transgress, nor would he transgress against you. When we do not share the message, it is a transgression. Because it is a command of Allah that we are supposed to go out and tell people. Now a lot of people, when they see this, they say, well, I thought you're going to proselytize. There is no compulsion in Islam. There's no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out above falsehood. But we still have a responsibility to invite people. And that's what dawah means. Dawah is an invitation. If I hold my gun to your head, and say, I want you to go to lunch with me today. Is that an invitation? No. no. That's compulsion, right? Yeah. Most people will just go because they want to live. That's violence. That's violence, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at Surah 5, verse 82, in, in relation to what we're saying. Thou wilt find the most vehement of mankind in hostility to those who believe to be the Jews and the idolaters. And thou wilt find the nearest to them in affection to those who believe to be those who say, Lo, we are Christians. This is because there are among them priests and monks, that is, persons entirely devoted to the service of God, as were Muslims. 
and because they are not proud. Now, in light of this verse, I want us to look at something. For seven years, I've been doing an interfaith dinner here, and this year, we had 20 Jews that attended this event, and 70... No, and we had 101 Christians. And 101 Christians, thank you. 101 Christians. Does that not sort of validify this verse? Now, Brandon is a Brendan, I'm sorry, is from St. Luke's United Methodist Church, six miles north of here, and he is with us every Sunday except when he's jet setting around the world doing his, <laughs> his tourist stuff. Am I right? You can right. Yes. And we regard him as a member of our family. And I experience his love for us. And, and those of you who know Brendan experience the same thing. Just like this verse speaks about. And I think he experiences our love for him. And one thing I would like to mention, brother, in the interfaith meeting that we had during Ramadan, the respect of, of the Christians and the Jewish that were here towards our religion because they, so many people here don't know that they fasted with us, they came to the mosque to pray with us and stuff like that and, and many, many Muslims don't accept this, this interfaith or, you know, you think they're sin if I go to the synagogue and sit down with them to learn. I, I think that Deborah's point is very valid. When I started this um, seven years ago, we would do on Sunday before the actual iftar what we call Ramadan 101. We would go to St. Luke's, the Jews in the neighborhood and all the other churches we invited would come and I would tell them what the day in the life of a Muslim is like and many of them would commit to fast and pray five times. Jews and Christians. How many of us would commit to experience what the Christians do for one day. And I think we need to ask ourselves that question, and then we need to, to recognize why we, we have the relationship with the world that we have. Why perhaps the media cast us in the manner that they cast us. Because we alienate ourselves, we live in vacuums, and therefore we are misunderstood. When you live in a vacuum, and people cannot see the real you, how can they identify with the real you? They can only identify with the person that when they come out their door, they walk like this, they don't speak to you, and they never invite you into their home. I believe, as a da'i, that the biggest mistake that Muslims that migrated to America made was they divided, so they would be a Palestinian community over here, an Egyptian community over here, a Moroccan community over here, a Guyanese community over here, a Yemeni community over here, and nobody else, and we don't communicate, we don't participate, and we don't let our children play with anybody except our people. How does that differ from racism and nationalism? It doesn't. We have the same thing. When we embrace Islam, me personally, 28 years ago, we had Muslims tell us we don't let our children play with Americans. And I'd say, well, thank you very much. My children are American. And this was very painful for them. And now, many, many years later, my children are coming back to Islam. They divorced from Islam because Islamic people did not accept them. They didn't even identify with them. And my children aren't reverts. I'm a revert. But my children were born into this faith raised in this faith and taught Islam about every day of their life by their father who was an imam. Did you want to say something, Mom? Yeah, you know, well, sometimes once in a while those Christian people have books and they knock my door. I don't know how to handle them because I think I don't have enough knowledge. I just tell them, don't worry, I follow Jesus Christ. <coughs> I follow the uh, messenger of God. All the messengers of God, they came in this world. So, I already follow him. So I think that means... my means messenger of God, Jesus I, Christ. I think that means you do know how to handle them. <laughs> yes. I think that... No, that but that's the I sent them. I want to know 
more knowledge to, uh, to convince them. Well, I think what I'm saying here that's very important, I think the greatest thing you can do is listen. Mm -hmm. If we are to identify with each other, listen, and then what does the Quran say? Look for what we have in common. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to the Christian for the first time. This is hypothetical. Obviously, you all know that I had a scholarship to Duke University when I was 17 years old to be a Methodist minister. But... Hypothetically, I'm listening to a Christian for the first time. I'm listening to see what we have in common. We have in common that Jesus is coming back. We have in common that Jesus is a prophet. We have in common monotheism, that there's one God. We have in common the angels. So I can go on and on. So I think you're doing a good job. And they keep on insisting me because they wanted to convert me somehow. And they keep on insisting me, are you from India? I said, yeah, I was born there. But I'm a Muslim, I follow Jesus. Also. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And I made a few other prophets. So the, the good news I want to add to this is that more and more conversations are taking place between Muslims and Christians. As a matter of fact, if you get online, which you know I don't usually recommend people, I don't recommend Sheikh Google and Sheikh Yahya, Yaha, Yahoo, because uh, they can uh, <laughs> lead you astray uh, very quickly. But you can put in Muslim and Christian dialogue. There is uh, Dr. Sayyid Sayyid who is an interfaith director for ISNA for many years doing what I do has been going in churches and different places building bridges of dialogue and understanding. Let's look at another surah that is very important in regards to the ayat in question today which is ayat 146 of Surah Al-Baqarah. O mankind, lo, we have created you male and female and have made you nations and tribes that you may know one another. Lo, the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the best in conduct. Lo, Allah is the all-knower and the all-aware. Now, a lot of people will say to me, but the Quran says I can't be friends with uh, non-Muslims. And that is not correct. We do not choose non-Muslims to be Wadis. What does Wadi mean? Protector. 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 It's more of an intimate friend. For example, if my daughter is getting married, I am her wali, I'm her guarantor. I'm going to look after her best interest. I wouldn't choose a non-Muslim because they wouldn't know the fit. They wouldn't know the adabs of my religion. But does that mean I can't be their friend? No. It does not. So I want to just clarify that because sometimes people misunderstand that. Alhamdulillah. We have a lot in common in the first three centuries of the Christian church. They, like us, believed there was one creator who sent many prophets. And like us, they believed in Jesus as the Messiah and the Word of God. We still believe, and we can show them in the Quran, that we believe in Jesus as the Messiah, as the liberator. That's another thing that we have in common. Let's look at another verse. In Surah 3, verse 45, these are great verses to call people to understand what we have in common. Remember when the angel said, O Miriam, O Mary, verily Allah gives you the glad tidings of a word from Him. His name will be Messiah Jesus. What a great verse when you're talking to Christians. The Son of Mary, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter, and of those who are near to Allah. Dialogue. Oh, you want me to go back? Okay, let's see. Let me see if I can do that. So dialogues are being held in most places in the world, examining what we have in common. There have been declarations by the Vatican and the Catholic Church going back to even 1960, where the popes acknowledged Muhammad wasallam, as a prophet. And I will be giving you some other proofs as we go along. Popes had made statements acknowledging Prophet Muhammad and Vatican theologians and Egyptian Muslim scholars have had discussions in Rome and in Cairo. 
Vatican theologians and Saudi Arabian Muslim scholars have also had discussions in Rome. And all of this you can verify. Karen Armstrong, how many people have actually seen and heard her before? If you ever get a chance to hear Karen Armstrong speak, you must go hear her speak. She wrote a book, Mohammed, A Western Attempt to Understand Islam in 1992. I think I still have that book, unless somebody borrowed it and forgot where they borrowed it from. <laughs> that happens to a lot of my books. Um, but look at this, because who was Karen Armstrong? A nun, a Catholic nun that wrote a book about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do you see how this ties into verse 146? The Christians know him. Now, all most of you have attended a class where I took you to the Bible and showed you all of the verses in Deuteronomy and various verses where. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually appears in the Bible. How many people have attended that class of mine? Some of you have, but don't remember it because there are faces here that have, but you just don't remember. And then I will do it again because you need to hear it again. Um, matter of fact, I was trying to decide whether to tie it in today, but because I thought everybody had heard it, they wouldn't want to hear it again. So. When I come back, inshallah, my class will be Muhammad in the Bible. How would you would you like that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but I heard Karen on the strong become a Muslim. Karen Armstrong did not become a Muslim. That is the idea. Yeah. But and that's okay. John uh, Esposito. It, how many people have heard John Esposito? Never pass up an opportunity to hear him. John Esposito's home is built with Arabic architecture. But he's not Muslim. But he's not Muslim. I have a friend who is a chaplain in South Carolina who is inviting me to his home. His office faces the Qibla. And he said to me, I'd like to become a Muslim but I don't know what I'd do with my education in Christianity. We do not compel these people. Allah calls people to say, perhaps he's Muslim in his heart. That's up to Allah. But I still, matter of fact, he did our website. I, I want you to hear, folks, what you don't hear. If you go to our website, the designer of that website is a Christian ministry. He said, Imam Sykes, people need to know about your class. They need to know about what you're doing. And he did our website. Is that amazing? Yes. And that's the kind of relationships that we need to build with people. Christians have attacked the prophethood of Muhammad وسلم, by claiming that he is a murderer, a rapist, pedophile, etc. They charged him with all these disgusting things and they have all been soundly refuted. However, only for sake of argument, let's assume that their arguments against Prophet Muhammad وسلم, are true. Does this disprove his prophethood? No. 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 And I'm going to show you something I think will surprise you. The prophets of the Old Testament have done countless acts of horrible things according to the King James Version. Now what do we as Muslims know about all prophets? They're sinless. sinless. That they're sinless and they came to do what? <laughs> very good, very good. Things ranging from getting drunk, um, having illicit relationships with their own daughters, murdering women and children, worshiping idols, sleeping with the women of ill repute, yet the Christians acknowledge this and still believe that these people are prophets. But when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, does something wrong, allegedly, that means he's not a prophet. Now isn't this a great piece of information to use as Daiya and Daiz? Did I say that right, Sister Daiya for women? Daiya? It's feminine, right? Yes. Yes. And Daiz. 
you know, take them to the Old Testament to some of the things that they say that King Solomon did, Prophet Suleiman, and then say, well, why are you saying this about my prophet, but you're not saying this about your prophet? It's written. That's a great dialogue. But don't do it antagonistically. Do it with love, with hope. I'm a little confused. I call it the Columbo effect. I use it all the time. And it really works. I sort of act real stupid. And I said, well, you know, I'm a little, help me out here. I'm a little confused. And I, you know, I got the trench coat on. And I'm saying, you know, I'm a little confused here because I, I just read the other day so and so. And that sounds a lot like what you're saying about my prophet. I like Columbo. Yes, I do too. <laughs> I love you so. He's gone. So we can see, though, in this, the hypocrisy. So when we can lovingly play tennis, dialogue with conflict, then we are building relationships. We are creating the space to make dollars. Many of you know that I am known to bite the elephant one bite at a time in the room. So at the last interfaith dinner, I said, the reason that Muslims are killing Muslims is because we, has a, we haven't obtained taqwa. We haven't achieved the goal of Ramadan, so Muslims in the world are killing Muslims. That way the Christians can't ask me that question because I've already answered it. And my wife will tell you that when I'm lecturing in colleges, which I even do more than I'm in churches, I address the issue. I have a standard presentation that I make every year that I'm updating all the time in the history department at the University of Central Florida on what is ISIS. Imagine that. And they're shocked because every single thing I say I've documented. It's not hearsay. It's not sensationalized media. It's scholarly work 